Let's talk about the 10,000 hour rule. This is the idea that it takes 10,000 hours to become a master or an expert. Let's give an example. So to become a master in chess, you would need 10,000 hours of practice. Or to become a master in science, you would need 10,000 hours of practice. And if you wanted to become a master in playing the violin, you would need 10,000 hours of practice. I'm assuming you're getting the picture. Now Malcolm Gladwell is a big proponent of this idea. And Malcolm Gladwell wrote an amazing book called Outliers. And I believe it is in this book is where he mentions the 10,000 hour rule. And there is no doubt that Malcolm Gladwell has popularized this idea. Indeed, a lot of people will make the connection between Malcolm Gladwell and the 10,000 hour rule. But is this idea of the 10,000 hour rule valid? Well, on a positive note, the 10,000 hour rule gives a solid foundation to the term practice makes perfect. And the chess example is a good one. It has been stated that no one can reach grandmaster level without 10,000 hours of practice. If we accept that premise, the house of the 10,000 hour rule has a strong foundation. So let's analyze this train of thought and begin this journey. Of course, of course, there is always context because context plays a significant role. And part of the context here is that preparation plus talent is very important because 10,000 hours does not turn you into Floyd Mayweather, but Floyd Mayweather has done his 10,000 hours of practice. And that to me is very, very significant because the reality is, is that we all can't be chess geniuses like Gary Kasparov, even if we apply 10,000 hours because the concept of talent is a real variable. But on the other hand, there seems to be something very real about the 10,000 hour rule. So we can say that this car, metaphorically speaking, has real momentum, so to speak. And as we've stated, Malcolm Gladwell popularized this idea. And to my knowledge, this rule is based on the research of Dr. Anderson Ericsson, who was a professor and psychologist from Sweden. And he did a study and the study was on chess players, musicians, athletes, and people from various fields. And the importance here is that there is a distinction made between practice and deliberate practice. And for those that don't know, deliberate practice has the goal of improving performance. To me, that means a practice that has an emphasis on improvements. Let's create an example. So you want to be a boxer. So you muster up the courage and you go to a boxing gym. You meet a trainer and you develop a professional relationship and you start the learning process. And this learning process has deliberate practice. So first, you may learn how to throw the jab. After that, you may learn how to throw a straight right. Then you may learn how to throw a left hook followed by uppercuts. After this, you may learn a sequence of combinations. Then you may learn how to feint. And then you may be taught more complex things such as controlling distance, tempo variations, and setting traps. As your boxing IQ increases, you may learn what I call boxing empathy. This is the understanding the moves of your opponent and responding accordingly. A good example of this is the first fight between Mike Tyson and Evander Holyfield. Evander utilized right hand counters to nullify the right hands. He then utilized left hook counters to nullify the left hooks. The point is, is that Evander had his 10,000 hours and he was able to utilize his boxing mastery. So to go back to the boxing example, practice these things for 10,000 hours and you have the opportunity to become a master. But you won't become a master if you spend 10,000 hours learning only to throw a jab. Therefore, it's not just practice, it's deliberate practice that is important. And of course, there are loads of variables. What is your talent? How good is your trainer? How good is your environment for boxing? I think the variable of environment cannot be understated. I mean, imagine in a theoretical scenario that you're learning how to write and in your environment is Stephen King, Oscar Wilde and Shakespeare. Now that would be a phenomenal environment for developing your writing skills. Here is some concluding points. 
Number one, 10,000 hours positively reinforces the importance of practice. Number two, it also reinforces the importance of deliberate practicing. Number three, the problem with the 10,000 hour rule is that some people may have some misrepresentations about the idea. And finally, number four, there are variables such as talent, motivation, environment, etc. And with that being said, I sincerely hope this video has provided value.